I thought I could. I thought I could. But I'm sort of obsessed with it. Yeah? Yeah, I want to prove. And these pronouns. What the with the pronouns? He, she, him, they, the, boom, bang, ba, bang, cool. You know what my pronoun is? Well, I think there's an issue that people aren't talking about. Marriage. Uh, there's a lot of things that they, they beat around the bush with. Um, my beef, I'm a libertarian, so my beef with. The While book. Hollywood has been employing every possible method to ingrain the woke ideology into the brains of the young generation, there are a few gems that have actively used their fight against it. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell have been fighting this uphill battle since the 90s, and that's a real pain for those elites. Since these household names have held their Christian values close to their hearts, the immunity to pronoun and alphabet mafia is no joke, which is really reflected in their fan base as well. The word has it that higher-ups are gearing up to cancel both the legends once and for all, but the duo itself is a force to be reckoned with. Sylvester Stallone It's no secret that Sylvester Stallone has been swimming against the Hollyweird currents for decades. While coursing through the sharp waves of woke culture, Sylvester has an ironclad wall of value that he's refused to let go. If you analyze Sylvester's works, he has produced one hit after another. But the fact remains that he's portrayed family values that have long been lost in the modern alphabet wave that reigns the screen nowadays. But as you could expect, things have not been smooth sailing for him. Nonetheless, he has stood firm. You might have noticed that most of the characters Sylvester has portrayed have strong values and integrity. Just last year, it was revealed that Sylvester had to fight each and every step of the way to put that kind of media out there. In recent years, more and more celebrities have been speaking about the alphabet people, and apparently, most have been feeding into the elitist agenda while cashing in on underlying favors. Well, the word has it that the financial backbone of his films have been trying to convince him to add more and more elitist ideologies by including people from various orientations. When Sylvester couldn't fight the pressure, he decided to go public with the struggles he had been facing behind the scenes. The sources claim that Sylvester fought against the money gang by accusing them of trying to paint his works in an unwanted political agenda. He firmly addressed the obnoxious strategies of the elite to force their beliefs down his throat. He said, the politically correct content and LGBTQ is rubbish that has nothing to do with the action genre and that only seeks to please a noisy minority and offend the silent majority. Now, before you go wildly labeling Sylvester as a Democrat or a Republican, you should know that he's been focusing on portraying core values of American culture long before he even knew what each part stood for. The majority of Stallone's career is a living testament of his beliefs. In an interview with the Sunday Times, Stephen Armstrong published, the action star said he had no idea that Rocky Balboa, the underdog boxer he first portrayed in 1976, would resonate with politicians at the time. I didn't even know what a Republican or a Democrat was until I was 30 years old. I really didn't until I went to Hollywood. I didn't know wrapping myself in a flag in Rocky would throw down the gauntlet. We know that fans often try to label their idols politically, and that was also the case for Sylvester as well. Back in 2019, Stallone told Variety that people assumed he was a Republican because he played patriotic characters like Rocky and John Rambo. He then explained that since he grew up in a politically agnostic household and said he didn't vote in the 2016 election, despite telling the outlet that year that he loved Donald Trump for being a great Dickensian character. So it's rather an undeniable fact that Sylvester was very careful in choosing sides, which eventually led him to create his own brand that was not parallel to the elitist agenda reigning the Hollywood environment. Well, right now, Sylvester is making waves for bashing the woke culture in his new film, Tulsa King. Now, it's a no-brainer that Tulsa King made a mark in the entertainment industry. But soon, people started a backlash against Sylvester for using his right of free speech. This is the clip that has wreaked havoc on the Internet. What the f with the pronouns? He, she, him, they, the, boom, bang, ba, fang, cool. You know what my pronoun is? Guess. Well, soon the backlash against him started making headlines, with people trying to cancel Sylvester. But since Tulsa King made great business online, the Twitter mob started to target Sylvester by spreading rumors about the non-existent toxic workspace on set. You know, when the higher-ups want to dampen a film's impact, they try to associate inappropriate workspace scandals. Well, that's what happened to Sylvester as well. The storm arose after someone tweeted this. Got this disturbing news from my Atlanta friend whose background on Tulsa King this week. 
Casting agent quit because she was so disgusted. My friend is feeling anxious about working now. Sylvester Stallone, what do you have to say for yourself, sir? Beyond disappointed. I'm livid. He and the director proceeded to call certain people terrible names and laughed at them. Sylvester said, bring in pretty young girls to be around me. But Sylvester did not buy into the trap and posted a very neutral remark saying, this was a very long, difficult, exciting, mind-blowing production that has just ended in Oklahoma. Though it was a long time to be away, it was worth it and to work with fantastic talent in front and behind the camera. Now, Sylvester did not limit his opposition to mere words, as he openly refused to do several movies for their woke ideologies, despite the big bucks that came with it. Just recently, the man who taught us all to fight for what's right in a boxing ring had turned down a staggering $500 million movie offer from Disney. His reason? He's had enough of the woke crap. While some might see this as a missed opportunity, others are left wondering if Stallone is just trying to dodge another political bait. I fought against Russians trained fighters, and even climbed mountains in my movies. But this? This is where I draw the line. The public supports Stallone's decision with all their heart. One of them comments, Stallone got his start by standing up to the Hollywood producers who wanted to buy the script for Rocky but not let Stallone star in it. He said no, he was going to star in Rocky or not sell the script. He stood firm and got what he wanted. Kurt Russell Fortunately, Sylvester is not alone in the fight against the Hollyweird agenda. You see, Kurt Russell has also joined forces with Sylvester to uproot the woke agenda that has plagued Hollywood society. In recent years, firearm violence incidents have skyrocketed. So, in an interview, Kurt engaged in a heated interview with Jeffrey Wells of Hollywood Elsewhere, during which he was asked about the Quentin cult of violence and firearm regulations in the United States. Kurt hinted that instead of restricted access, the government should focus on educating people as the evil people would gain access by using any means but the general public would be left without any weapon to defend themselves. He even alleged that it was all due to Hollywood's weird obsession with glorifying crime. He said, If you think firearm control is going to change the T's point of view, I think you're like out of your mind. I think it's absolutely insane. What are you going to do? Outlaw everything? That isn't the answer. Well, even if you are against Kurt's opinion, know that Kurt only stated his opinion. Nothing more, nothing less. However, it turned out it was an attempt to drag Kurt into a political conversation. If you think about the scenario, Kurt was not mentally prepared for such a question, as he was there for an entertainment interview, not a political debate. However, he did his best to de-escalate the situation. You see, in contrast with the interviewer's pro-firearm control opinion, Russell finally cut the heated conversation off by saying, You and I just disagree. I understand that you think you can control the behavior of people that are dead set on taking your way of life away from you. You think you can control that. And there's only one thing you can do with that. And that's to say, no, dude, that's not going to happen. Russell even clarified his position, this time tempering his response and leaving room for others to disagree. In reality, when we're dealing with things like tea and whatnot, we're all going to have different opinions on how to do it, how to deal with it. I think it's too bad that the debate can't remain kind of civil, too. I just leave it open for interpretation for all different people and say, we're all in this together. Anyway, the media did not let that go, as the actor was asked about the interview on the ABC daytime talk show, The View. Well, this time around, he took a different approach and explained that he was ambushed by a reporter during the dog and pony show of the movie's press tour. Sometimes you get what you kind of feel is slightly ambushed by somebody who's really got an agenda. And that's sort of my opinion of what happened to me the other day. The thing I like to watch is, is entertainers or actors uh get political. It's just, it's just something I can't stand watching. The hateful aid actor was questioned about the connections between director Quentin Tarantino's cinematic universe and reality, especially post San Bernardino attacks and Paris attacks. Russell cleverly maintained his opinion that they cannot be connected because movies are movies. They're like a painting, like a song, like a book. I don't think it has anything to do with anything outside the film. Well, since Hollyweird people have a weird obsession with taking down people like Kurt and Sylvester, they would employ any means necessary. Such means may entail falsely accusing Kurt of supporting the most hated political figure right now, which at the time is Donald Trump. These past few weeks, the rumors about Kurt being a hardcore fan of Trump have been going wild. It all started when a person tweeted this, Kurt Russell, Donald J. Trump is relentless, never seen a man so dedicated and determined. The world is after him and he stands there in the face of pure evil, rock solid and ready to fight for us. God bless this brave man. We agree, Kurt. 
Well, although Kurtz fans did not fall for the trap, but everyone else did, which was apparently the sole purpose of that post. While several people started blindly agreeing with Kurt's pseudo-remarks, others pointed out that Kurt might be one of the few genuine celebrities out there. Yes, I agree. Kurt Russell is one of the few Hollywood stars that is a free thinker and hasn't let the overwhelmingly liberal majority twist his way of thinking. Another added, Well, there is one problem with this. If we cut them off, they're just going to leave and spread their liberal cancer throughout America. And if we're going to do that, we need to lock New York City down like Kurt Russell's escape from New York. While this false news was blowing up, the rumors of Kurt's cancellation gained traction as well. Apparently, Kurt Russell is planning on retiring from filmmaking because Hollyweird will no longer employ him after this intolerable offense to their woke agenda. Congrats on a long storied career. Used Cars is one of my all time favorite silly movies. I give Kurt. In this time of need, Sylvester also backed Kurt on his beliefs. Despite his portrayal of firearm slinging soldier Rambo, the Daily Beast describes Stallone as the most anti firearm celeb in Hollywood in 2017. He told the Sunday Times that they can't take firearms away, but believes that they can be managed more responsibly. I don't see a purpose in hunting with a 40-round magazine. If you can't hit something in five shots, then you're not a very good hunter. To be able to buy a weapon that I can change in one second to automatic, I don't see it, he said. You can't take firearms away. They've been ingrained for 250 years, but you have to take the irresponsibility out of it. Now, the thing is, for those who have been following Kurt since the beginning now, that Kurt has vowed to be strictly away from politics all his career. All he has ever done is portray his beliefs on television screens without speaking out on political topics. Well, once Kurt Russell claimed that Hollywood stars should not wade into politics publicly, as doing so only hurts their craft, accompanied by partner Goldie Hawn for a co-feature in The New York Times, the iconic actor made clear his views on Hollywood and politics being oil and water. He said, I've always been someone who felt we are court jesters. That's what we do. As far as I'm concerned, you should step away from saying anything so that you can still be seen by the audience in any character. There's no reason entertainers can't learn just as much as anybody else about a subject, whatever it is. But I think what's sad about it is that they lose their status as a court jester. And I'm a court jester. That's what I was born to do. A court jester is the only one who can walk into the castle and put the king down as long as he doesn't hit too close to home. I think that's been a big important part of all cultures throughout history, and I'd like to see it stay in ours. At that time, Russell even pointed out the decline of authentic movie stars in the industry. Fans believe Russell openly insulted the Hollywood elites for preparing an army of puppets rather than actors that only serve their agenda, not their craft. We're all trying to figure out what to do. I mean, when you look at how AMC has only so much money to exist before it goes away, when you see that big screen and people are in there engaging, there's nothing like it. It makes me very melancholy to know that it could be over. I think the question is, will there be an arena for that? Without the arena, those movie stars don't happen. That cultural aspect doesn't happen. Anyway, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn have become the standard for committed couples who opt not to get married, but it turns out that the idea has crossed their minds. However, the whispers in the industry suggest that Kurt lost his faith in marriage after gay marriage became legalized in the country. When he said he was asked about his marital status, he said, I've been going with my girl for 40 years. It's come up in conversation, whereas it never used to. We had both been married. We had both done that. And you know what? We lived our life. We've had our family. Our family continues to grow. It's fantastic. Both Hahn and Russell have been candid about their decision not to get married over the years, with Hahn telling Women's Day in 2007 that the couple have done just perfectly without tying the knot. I already feel devoted. And isn't that what marriage is supposed to do? So long as my emotional state is in a state of devotion, honesty, caring, and loving, then we're fine. She shared at the time that both she and Russell want to maintain independent finances. If you have independence, if you have enough money and enough sense of independence, and you like your independence, there's something psychological about not being married because it gives you the freedom to make decisions one way or the other. So for me, I chose to stay. Kurt chose to stay. Anyway, their marital status might also be the result of the tumultuous divorces both of them had to go through. Han explained that she did not want to go through a poopy divorce again. She also pointed out that they already have a great understanding with their children, thus their marital status is not of much value. Somebody actually has to take a look and say, how many divorces actually are fun? How many divorces actually don't cost money? How many divorces actually make you hate the person more than you did before? How many divorces have hurt children? We've raised our children brilliantly. 
They're beautiful people. We did a great job there, and we didn't have to get married to do that. I like waking up every day and seeing that he is there, and knowing that I have a choice. There is really no reason to marry. The two actors first met while filming Disney's 1968 live-action movie musical, the one and only genuine original family band. But it would be another 15 years before romance sparked. Despite their nearly six-year age difference, and the fact that they were both determined not to date other actors, Russell made a strong first impression on Han. I was 21 and he was 16, and I thought he was adorable, but he was much too young. And then years later, we met up again and I liked him. And I remembered that I liked him very much when I first met him. But we both said we would never go out with another actor. So it just shows you never can tell. That's all for today. We hope you liked that video. And if you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content just like this.